Welcome back, auto dealers. Jill Nicolini here with Auto Dealer News, your main source for all the latest in the automotive dealer world. Now, we'll be speaking with industry leaders to provide you with the newest trends, technology, marketing, and sales strategies that will help your dealership or automotive group grow and thrive in this great industry. And it wouldn't be Auto Dealer News without our resident expert, CEO of Dealer Source Group and Universal Marketing Solutions, automotive sales trainer and business entrepreneur with over 15 years of producing outstanding results in the automotive retail industry. And of course, we're talking about our automotive guru, Richie Bello. How are you doing today, Richie? Good, Jill. How are you today? Fantastic. Great to be here again with you. And I'm very excited. We have a few wonderful guests to introduce now, don't we? We do. They're <laughs> great. So who do we have over here to our right? Mr. El Patron. El Patron, hey, Jill, welcome. How are you? Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you for doing the show live. All right, so El Patron, tell us. I know you're uh, the GM over at the Brooklyn Mitsubishi, and you've been there for how many years now? Uh, I've been with the company about seven years now. Okay. So we just took over Brooklyn about seven years, seven months ago. Fantastic. Yes. So we're very excited. We're doing a lot of things um, right now. You know, we're changing. Basically, we changed the culture. The whole culture of the dealership um, has changed, and. You know, I'm all about people, process, product, right? If you believe in the process, uh, you believe in the product, you can sell anything you do at anything that you do. Would you agree, Rich? Absolutely. So, And the good thing about Patron is that he's really turned the place around. He increased his reviews tremendously. He's got tremendous process, sales process, leadership. He has turned this dealership completely around. I've been watching this dealership for quite some time. As you know, I'm really close to Bobby. Yes. And he's the dealer principal. And yes. I've I've done deals with Bobby. And bringing in El Patron has really turned this place completely around. Wow. Now, speaking of the reviews you just mentioned, uh, that's on Dealer Raider, correct? Correct. Dealer that's Raider. where you get all of the reviews from. And from when I just looked before online, they're all pretty positive. Yes. I mean, listen, uh, like Richie said, uh, the owner got to be on board right and that's one thing that i love about bobby and, and and andy you know they're they get it you know most of the time there's owners they micromanage and you know it's about trusting the process and trusting the gm that's going to do the right thing for the store and you know i have people that obviously that i look up to and and you know my process have worked and you know it's it's a trial and error right so we try it if it doesn't work we change it again so we don't change the goal but we change the process and at the end of the day it, it's about you know working with your team right you're only as good as your team so if they like you and you bring nothing but positive to the store the numbers are gonna show right numbers never lie mm -hmm. and then that's what it's about so what type of leadership styles and techniques do you all use at the dealership that puts you out there and makes you number one like you are now? I mean, listen, I'm all positive, right? And there's always a way to find a way to deal. There's a lot of managers out there that are negative. Um, you know, they they're, don't find a way. I always say, listen, try, try a different way, different approach, right? Go this way, go that way. Get the TO done on the customer. Give it a different phase. Give it to another salesman. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the salesman doesn't click with the customer. Um, and you'd be surprised the next, you know, a few minutes later, they're selling them a car. Why? Because they use a different approach. And that's what I'm about. I'm about a different approach, changing the style, changing the system and what works. And customer service is very important to me. Mm -hmm. And obviously if it's important from the top and like Bobby embraced the changes, right? Everybody trickles down. Everybody's going to, you know, get, get get on board with it, right? And that's what have, we have done in Brooklyn and we have worked and we're going to have a record month. Uh, and we have, you know, three, three car, 300 car challenge next month. So we're very excited about that. And El Patron, I'm pretty sure that he has turned his inventory because when a dealership hits these kinds of numbers, they have to turn their inventory. And he's doing a great job on live. He's doing a great job on social media and he's showing the inventory. That only means to me as a professional that he's turning his inventory. I guarantee you his average day of inventory has really dropped probably down to 120 or even 60 days. It's a little less than that. Yeah, it's a little because less Because he is doing really good. I don't know right now the store, but I'm sure he's turning the inventory. He's probably taking all deals at all times and he's just right now putting a lot of different processes in place to turn the store like this 
It's not one thing that does it in a dealership. It's turning your inventory, leadership, reviews. It's a lot of different things. And I watch the inventory online, and I see it getting turned a lot. So I know that there's a lot of different things that are going on right now that he's doing. Key thing, he is managing his inventory right, managing his sales department right. And now he's got Stan Shear doing content in their video content. And Stan Shear is one of the best guys I've seen with content, whether it's written or video, whatever it is, he is really good at it. Yeah, let's introduce uh, Stan Chi right now. Of course, he's uh, joining us via Skype. Stan, can you see us and hear us? How are you? Yes, I can. Good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Well, thank you. All right, Richie. So introduce your friend to us. Give us a little Stan more. Stan Shear is one of the best guys I've seen. At a very young age, Stan Shear became a speaker for Greater New York Dealer Association. I am so impressed about Stan Shear at a very young age. Stan, how old were you back then? Um, let's see, five years ago, 29. He was 29 years old. He is an amazing guy. Everything Stan Shear has put his mind to, he has accomplished. He's always been really, really good with content. He has helped me with content a lot years ago and Stan's really, really good at this. So Stan, why don't you go over what the process that you're doing over there and you're working with El Patron really, really good. You two guys are really amazing together. I'm so impressed. No, I appreciate that. So what we do is I have a business partner. Uh, we basically took my company, Dealery Training, and we merged it, partnered up with a company out of New York called Automotive Ad Builder or Auto Ad Builder make it short and uh, we do marketing we did some marketing for other dealerships last year and then uh, we kind of uh, regrouped our thoughts at first we were offering too many services we realized there's a lot of guys out there doing about the same thing so we decided to basically simplify it and we keep it really simple we come to the store right now we're in his store once a week we film content everything from the cars to um, video testimonials to uh, salespeople introducing themselves um, right yesterday we were in there, we were filming everything in the body shop. We actually filmed and took pictures of how a vehicle is getting prepped and painted in the body shop. They have a really nice, probably $100,000 or more expensive uh, body shop room where that stuff gets done. And uh, we take all this content and then my partner comes back to his home office and he basically puts together different videos. He'll put out anywhere from five to 10 videos during the week. Um, and what we'll do is we'll promote them on Instagram, Facebook, um, we get blogging done for the dealership. We get press releases done for the dealership. Like right now, uh, this dealership is about to be doing a uh, event for the Eclipse Cross launch. And basically we're going to be helping promote it. We're doing a press release that should be released by tomorrow uh, for that dealership for an event that's going to happen in just about two weeks. Um, we just get involved. And then whenever the dealership uh, does what they do, which is be very social, uh, we help boost those posts. For instance, aside from what we do for the dealership, uh, this is a very social dealership. It's not like many dealerships that you'll experience. They actually get really involved and they actually do a lot of their own social media. We just help them boost it up, so to speak. So that's pretty much what we do. Well, well, Stan, I have a question for you. So basically you're saying nowadays, of course, with the age of technology, that social media <coughs> really is one of the most important tools to help a dealership, uh, of course, like Brooklyn Mitsubishi, really succeed. So you urge all dealerships to get involved and put their self out there and promote themselves. Like what type of um, you know inventory are we seeing? Are people coming in because they are seeing you on social media and commenting about that? So you're definitely yes. drawing in the customer? Yes, basically wh what it is is that you know, and, and what I love about Stan is like you give you give him a you give him a, a script, right? You say you give him an idea mm -hmm. and he takes it and run, right? And yeah, of course. Listen, Facebook right now it's if it's not is like the only you, if you're not on Facebook, you, you pretty much might as well be out of business, right? Yeah. <laughs> so bottom line, you know, and we're using that platform to expose the dealership and you gotta put yourself out there. Most people are now willing to, to, to do the silly things that we do. You know, we do videos about our cat that we have in the dealership, you know, and mm -hmm. we get we gets a lot people of hits. People can relate to that It gets stuff, a lot yeah. of hits and people will be surprised. And watching it's, the car being painted yeah. and all things that people don't get to right. see. It's like behind the scenes. We all want to get a sneak peek. And you got a guy like Stan that understands that and 
picks, you know, like I'll take a picture of the cat or I'll put it on my personal <laughs> page and he'll go and make a video out of it. And it's just, we start getting content on it. So that's really what it's about. And I think that has done a lot for us at the dealership to kind of expose the dealership where we are right now. And that's why we're getting a lot of content from it on, on Facebook. Right. And Stan also mentioned the uh, Mitsubishi Outlander. Would you mind enlightening me here? I, I hear this is the biggest thing for 2018. Well, yes, the PHEV came out, which is pretty much, uh, it's a hybrid, it's a three mode. Uh, they're number one in Europe right now. They launched it over here. They got a lot of incentives, almost $7,000 from the government wow. just to get the vehicle. Um, we have the Eclipse, it's back. Right, they just bought it in, in, in a form of a truck, and it's a very styling looking vehicle. They're comparing it to the Lexus uh, NX. Um, very, very um, high tech stuff that Mitsubishi is going to put this back on the map with Mitsubishi. That's why the name Eclipse kind of like suits and, and fits with it as well. And Stan gets that, and that's why I think me and him work so great. That mm -hmm. ideas that I give him, he takes it and run, and I'm like, I'm wow, you know, because these guys have the technology. He, he's been a car guy. He closes deals. He gets involved in the dealership. And I think that's important. You know, you, you need to have that backing. So, and, and to have that experience in order to relate to a dealership. You know, not, not to, too bad to say about anybody else, but you got this big guy selling you these ideas, but they never been a car guy. Yeah. So how can you understand me if I started as a salesperson 15 years ago? You understand know what I'm saying? Right. So I think that that's a lot part of my success and our success, right? Um, like I said, you're only as good as your team. Um, the owner embraced it. Everybody embraces it. It comes from the top, and you see the rest of them just on it, you know, getting the reviews, getting the videos. And listen, we don't have high-tech stuff, right? We're just doing it. We're just putting ourselves out there. You know, the, 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 the quality might not be as good, but people like that stuff. You know, it, you see TV right now. TV right now, it's Facebook Live, like we're yeah, doing right now. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know watching. what I'm saying? That, that's what TV is now. So... You know, you got to get ahead of it, and I like to be ahead of it, just like Stan. He's always, um, he's we always, you know, sharing ideas, and uh, I think it's gonna be a great year in the car business, and especially for us. You know, God willing, it's it's gonna be a good one. And one thing I want to point out is that Mitsubishi is very affordable. You're talking to an old owner of yes. a 2002 Mitsubishi. That's Eclipse, right. And that car <laughs> had over 300,000 miles, going wow. back and forth from Long Island to the city for yes. many years. Yes. Wow. So I am a firm believer in Mitsubishi, and that's the one thing I love to hear. And then people see you because it is affordable. It's a great product. Yes. But it's also affordable, which I think is very important to people out there. It's it's believing in the product, like I said to you, right? You, you can sell anything. At the end of the day, you're selling yourself, you're selling the dealership. But if you believe in the product, you're going to do well. And, you know, people can relate that. Energy. I'm all about energy, mm -hmm. positive energy, you know. And, and you're positive to these guys, you know, that, that Hitler stuff, I'm not down with that, you know. You, you got to motivate them and guide them. They just need guiding most of them. You, I've been through it, and I was a salesperson. And, you know, I used to have managers that used to be very negative, And I, I didn't want to be that kind of manager. So I, I like to... Be positive and find a way. Listen, there's plenty of dealerships out there, but customers are just looking for a better experience, right? And my yeah. thing is, I'm going to give you the best experience buying a car because mm -hmm. they're already coming in with their guards up. So I'm going to make it as painless as possible and as easy as possible. And how do you do that? Just curious. So the, the salespeople greet you when you walk in the door? I'm yes, saying? greet, okay. meet and greet, smile, you know, offer them coffee. I was I mean, going to say, if you things. have good coffee, that's very yes, important we have to a Dunkin customer. Donuts. All, all, right. Right. Dunkin all Donuts. the time, all the time. All the time. So, <laughs> you know, th those are the little things Man. that actually go a long way. They do. Because you, you go to a business, right, and, you know, your follow-up got to be strong, right? Because, listen, there, there's plenty of dealerships, like I said to you. The difference is how you're going to treat them and after they leave, right? So we're all about customer service, making that customer happy. Before they leave, they want to make sure that they're 100% they're satisfied. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's part of our success. And the other thing that you guys are really successful is, and you know Stan Shear, he's got tremendous enthusiasm. That's what really carries a lot. Yeah. And you bring tremendous enthusiasm. And you know, one of the things that you see a dealership is when a dealership is on the spiral up, they're on the spiral up. There's nothing that can stop them. Momentum, yeah. Right. When a dealership is on the spiral down, they're on the spiral down yeah. period. And what Stan Shear, I've seen him do a lot, is he brings dealerships to that spiral up. Right. And how he does that, he's amazing, is because of that enthusiasm that he brings. Right. That social media hype. Yeah. That enthusiasm that both of you guys, and now seeing both of you guys working together that I've been watching a lot of live, you have tremendous enthusiasm. Yeah. 
and you guys feed off each other. Wow, that's amazing how you guys are working that. Your dealership right now, it's on tremendous spiral, and it's yeah. because of that energy and that enthusiasm. I gotta ask Stan, where do you get that enthusiasm from and that energy? Um, I've always pretty much been a happy person, and uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm very goal-oriented, and I have a lot of things that I need to accomplish, and I, I always say I'm on the way up, and I think the fact that I have to be on that way up is what makes me so enthusiastic. I don't let anybody bog my mind down with negativity I used to. And um, it just took years of patience, learning, focus, getting experience, and then just, I guess, a little bit of ego. We all have it. And uh, mm -hmm. I just get enthusiastic about it, and I just try to make the best of every situation. Right. Listen, especially nowadays, you know, there's so much negativity out there right now. And it's just about exposing yourself, right? So. If you're going to be selling, sell yourself, number one, right? That's ABC, always be closing. So, you know, that's my thing. So I'm always selling myself, the dealership, and you have to care for the dealership and you have to act like you own the dealership because that's what's going to make the difference. You're going to care. You know, you see garbage, pick it up. You, yeah. you see little things like that. I have nitpick for it. You know what I mean? So I think, and, and the rest of the sales staff sees it. You know, everybody else is on board with it, and why not, right? Like you said, we're, we're in the upswing, so we're going to keep continuing this momentum that we have. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it's just mental. You know, you put your head. It's a mindset. It's a mindset, right? So you're going to do 10 cars today? Yeah, we're going to do 10 cars. So we're going to finish our record month today. It's the end of the month. Um, but, you know, I was honored you, you guys brought us on board, and, and you went live, which I appreciate <laughs> that. You know, It's my pleasure. Yes. Yeah, it's it's our pleasure. We're big on live, you know that. So social media, it's, it's where it's at, and, and, you know, some people are just – not doing nothing with it you know, you know what i'm saying we, we just using that platform and it's a lot cheaper guys okay than, than google i got <laughs> nothing against google but it's very expensive so to do the stuff that i have to do to get the exposure i have to pay like 10 times that on google Correct. so why not use it on facebook i love facebook you know i'm always on facebook so why not well, speaking of that momentum with you at the dealership, uh, tell us how it's actually helped business to grow over at Brooklyn Mitsubishi because I think you have some news to announce about the other acquiring. We, yes, of we, Kia. we we're in uh, we're in the process. There's rumors out there that you know we're acquiring Kia, and uh, yeah, we, we, why not? You know, they 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 approached us, and listen, my owner's vision it's bigger than mine, right? And I think that we feed off each other. Right. right. So yeah. his dreams are bigger than mine. I like to be in his dreams. And you know what I'm saying? So, and I think that positive stance shares the same dreams. You know, we go on NADA together and we want to go and learn and we want to master these things because we want to be ahead of everybody. You know, we all have the same 24 hours. Right. So I'm up at five in the morning. Mm -hmm. You understand? I'm, I'm watching videos. I'm reading stuff. What's coming out. Mm -hmm. So anybody can do it. That's the difference. Right. So. I want to be ahead. Stan, you know, we're going to NADA. We're excited. We want to learn all the new products coming out. So when I get back, I'm going to have it already. I'm going to master it. So, But I want to share that with everybody else. You know, we're doing the show. We, we're trying to do my show. I got my own website coming up. And I'm going to be doing things like you do, links and, and, and things like that, that people are doing it, the Facebook thing. We want to share it with everybody because, you know what, it's working for me. It can work for everybody else. Correct. And and just try it. You, you know, what's the worst that can happen? You're going to sell more cars? You know, I know yeah. we will. We're going to have a record month today, you know, to, on the shortest month of the year. Mm -hmm. So, and next month we have a bigger challenge, which is 300 cars. And that's going to be a year over year. It's, it's crazy. But that's really what it is about. It's, it's about passion. I'm passionate about the business, just like Stan, just like you. You've been a long time. And it's about hitting those goals. You know, we have monthly goals, daily goals, weekly goals, and we try to hit those numbers every single day. So if you didn't get to it, okay, we'll get them tomorrow. You know what I mean? If, if we tweak it a little bit and we're making a lot of changes, you know, it's about changing the culture in the dealership. And I change the entire culture of the dealership. So I think that's a big part of it and where it's going, but it has to come from the top. So the owner's on board, everybody's on board. You see and you've changed the culture, and I've looked at it, and I've analyzed it because you've impressed me a lot. You've changed the culture because of your leadership skills is really, really so great that I've noticed. I've seen you on live and I've seen yeah. that day you were on live for over an hour. Yeah. I saw a few salespeople and I see your motivational, how you talk to them and all that. It's really, your leadership skills are really, really good. 
And that makes it happen. Absolutely. I mean, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Of course. And you have great communication skills yeah. with your team. Yes. And I've been watching that for a while, how you do it. And it's really, really an unbelievable skill that you possess. Right. And that's really talent and skill and development. And that's the delivery of your content, right. of El Patron content. And that's key to get that spiral going up. Of course. I mean, listen, I don't want to say that, that I know it all, right? And I always say this, but I got it down to a science. You understand what I'm saying? So that works for me. That doesn't mean that, you know, yes, we're in Brooklyn and we're selling cars. And, of course, um, I want my guys to do better, right? It's always, you always want to grow. And, and that's the thing. You don't want to stay stale. You know, there's always opportunities to come to you. Like me and Stan, there's a lot of opportunities coming up to us right now that people are just calling us out of nowhere. Hey, I want you to be on my show. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. Why not? That was the whole reason of putting ourselves out there. And the thing with the guys is that if you if you guide them, if you motivate them, they're gonna do good for you. If they love you, they'll do anything for you. You know. And my owners, I love these guys. These guys get it. They they understand me. They get me. You know. I can get a little. You know. Sometimes, but they know at the end of the day, it's business, right? There's business and it's personal, and you got to be able to to balance that. And I think that I I mastered that. So where I keep it business and, and it's also personal, you know, some at the same time. And Stan also does the same thing. So, yeah, reviews are important. You know, um, I'm doing a, I'm doing a, actually a webinar tomorrow and I go live on the webinars because I want to share with everybody else. You know, all these things are coming to me. I want to share with everybody that is in the automotive that want to do different. You know, I, I saw a, I went to a training last week, actually, and they had the, um, the old Q, um, the Q test, whatever they call it, with, the, with nine dots. And everybody got it wrong. And this was like all, right? It's, it talks about going outside the box. And that's what I'm about. That's what Stan is about. Thinking outside the box, that cookie cutter stuff, we don't like that stuff. We like we like to freestyle and do it our way. And obviously it's working for us, right? It can work for everybody else out there, but you just got to put yourself out there and actually take the chance. And the worst thing you're going to do is you're going to sell a lot of cars. Wait. I can tell you that right now. I just asked Stan a question um, in regards to the uh, marketing. Now, I know we're talking about Facebook. We're also talking Instagram, Twitter. What seems to be the biggest social media platform that you use? Which one is most successful? And then also, what's the difference with the paid and organic social media? So we don't do too much paid, uh, paid social media. We do a little bit more organic. Uh, what we do is we'll, we'll post something on Instagram. And I have a, a software that I used to post from a desktop. Um, to Instagram, and then what we'll do is we'll turn around and we'll post later on on Facebook. Um, what we'll usually focus on is we'll focus on the real stuff. We'll focus on the cars, and we'll try to focus on the more expensive, the more upscale cars, the cars that people are always going to want to watch, um, as opposed to you know the lower end cars. Um, what we'll do is then we'll sometimes boost um, the visibility for those nicer cars. A store like uh, Brooklyn Mitsubishi. They sell a lot of real high highline cars. Like they have Audi R8. Um, they do a lot of Infinities. I think with the one Saturday he did seven Infinities alone. We'll focus on the trend of what's going on in the store, and uh, we'll promote that, and that'll get more eyeballs. Um, then the other thing that happens is when you're partnered with a dealership that is very social, like Brooklyn Mitsubishi, they have a really good culture, which we talked about. They use that culture and they feed that in with their social media, and then it just helps us do what we do a lot better because they're on board with what we're doing. Um, you know, so there are times, sorry, there are times <laughs> oh. when uh, people um, actually uh, dealerships do not, are not fully on board. So then you try to do all the right things for them on social media and it doesn't happen. Um, and there's a lot of agencies out there that don't just post random links and random content that has nothing to do with the cars. For us, our goal obviously is to sell cars because we're car people, so we focus on posting everything about the dealership. And anything that we post that has nothing to do with the dealership, whether it be OEM, whether it be uh, some you know tips or motivational stuff, what we'll usually do is we'll usually feed that to the dealership's website, and every post that we do is meant to drive traffic to the website. And also just want to bring up, you mentioned, of course, the camaraderie of your team in order to help, of course, get your inventory moving. And, of course, it's so important to the customer. And speaking of, like, networking, uh, Richie, Bello, would you mind just telling us uh, what's happening uh, May 9th? You have a big cigar night. Oh, yes, night. I have a big cigar night. Uh, it's a cigar buffet. The website's getting done right now with a nice venue for dealers. And El Patron's going to be a speaker. 
speaker. Stan Shear is going to be a speaker, and Ralph Peglia is going to be a speaker. Okay, where and is it? It's right at the Beach Club. Okay, the right? Beach Club in uh, Lake Ronkonkoma? Right. Okay. And uh, it's for dealers. We're inviting all automotive dealers, and Jill... Is coming on board too. Yes, I am. And I'll that's be great. hosting the MC Extraordinaire of the evening. It should be fun. So, we're inviting all our dealerships, and our Stan Chair is inviting his dealerships, and El Patron. I hopefully you'll bring Bobby out. Absolutely, <laughs> I'll, I'll do a live. I'll do a live. You know, <laughs> we'll go See Facebook we live. Yeah, we could do Absolutely. a live from there. We yes. do a whole show from there too. Why not? Why not? Listen, it's about networking, like you said, right? So if we can help one person sell more cars, hey, it's gonna come back for us ten times full. And that's what we're about. You know, that's what me and Stan are about. And Bobby, you know, I'm, I'm happy for Bobby. He's one of the good guys. And and like I said to you guys before, it's it's all a matter of getting the owner on board. Um, so to all owners out there, if they are watching, uh, trust your GM a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of good ones out there. Uh, just trust them a little bit more, you know, that they know the process. You got to trust the process. Uh, everybody wants it done yesterday, you know, but, and that's instant gratification. But if you, if you work it and if you save it, um, it's going to work and it's going to do good for you. Great, Richie, where can we get more information? How can dealers get involved uh, to come to the event? Uh, RichieBello.com. There's a link there to sign up. And uh, Stan Shear is going to be talking about this social media marketing, this video awesome. content. It's going to be, and Stan Shear is a great speaker. Amazing, this guy speaking. I've seen him speak a number of times. Fantastic. Well, guys, I want to thank you all for chatting with us today. And, of course, there will be many more of these in Auto Dealer News. And, again, unfortunately, that's all the time we have right now for Auto Dealer News. But until next time, Auto Dealers, don't forget I'm your host, Jill Nicolini. We want to thank, of course, Richie Bello here at Richie Bello TV and Rudy and Stan. You guys are fantastic. We really appreciate thank you coming you. on the show. Yeah. And, again, we'll see you right here next time on Richie Bello TV.
audio in my ear. I'm done. I hear the music. It's too loud. I think you're on. You're on. All right. Should we start from the top? How are y'all doing? I'm Joel Nicolini. Another installment of Auto Dealer News right here. Your best source for all that's going on in the automotive dealer world. We'll be speaking with leaders in the automotive industry to catch you up on all the newest trends, the technology, marketing, and sales strategies that will help your dealership or automotive group be very successful and grow. Now, of course, we're here with our automotive guru, CEO of Dealer Source Group and Universal Marketing Solutions, automotive sales trainer and business entrepreneur with over 15 years of producing outstanding results in the automotive retail industry. And yes, I'm talking about our resident expert himself. Self. Richie Bello, round of applause. How you doing today, Richie? Good. How are you, Jill? Good to be back, and I'm loving this live feed we have here, aren't Thank you? Thank you. Yes, I do love it. You're doing fantastic. We just got to lower that audio in here because we have some reverb happening yeah. in our studio, right? I'll make it louder. It'll go away. <laughs> exactly. We won't <laughs> hear them. So let's talk today. We're bringing in a very special guest. Oh, uh, Dale. Dale's a very special guest. Mm -hmm. Dale is a master closer society and he's building. And the thing that I like about him, he's always helping out people that want to get better, that want to learn how to close more deals. And he's in a lot of different industries, not just the automotive industry. Okay, well, let's welcome Dale uh, Childress Jr. to the show. He's joining us via Skype now. How are you doing? Hey, guys, how are you doing? Great to see you. Richie, thank you so much for having me on here. Dale, how are you today? I'm doing great, brother. How are you doing? Good. So I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about you because I'm so impressed. And, you know, I've been following you for quite some time now, and I'm always sharing your stuff. And I've learned a lot from your content. And well, I appreciate that. I always want to go to your live, but somehow I miss it. But when I don't, I watch it, and I learn a lot. One of the things with you is you want to build a master closer society. And I'm really impressed with that. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. So I founded Master Closer Society about three years ago. And I remember when I was 18 years old, I had my first sales job. And I went on that first appointment and it was, it was outside sales. And I went on that first appointment and I remember how terrified I was whenever I, I knocked that first door and went in on that appointment and I did not want to be there. And I made a promise to myself then that if I could ever be in a position to help other salespeople avoid that scenario, I was going to learn whatever it took in order to help them avoid that scenario that I experienced. So that's one of the things that inspired me three decades ago, ago to, uh, to begin Master Closer Society. That's really, really interesting. Uh, and the other thing that I've learned a lot from you is how you do this rooftop uh, pitch to the roofers. Tell us yes. a little bit about that. Okay. So, so I have multiple programs right now uh, in order to help people from different industries. One of the prime targets or one of my primary demographics is the roofing. It's a storm restoration um, industry and I do have an all-day workshop it's a program it's called pitch the roof and that's an all-day workshop where I actually go out to each uh, clients uh, office on location and I do a live event we do that nationwide across the United States so if you are in the storm restoration industry I definitely can hook you up now I also have an extensive background in auto repair so I have a very unique uh, service that I offer the auto repair industry um, I actually do sales training for auto repair service. I know it's a very unique niche and I'm excellent at it. So those of you that have service departments, I can increase your sales. I did have, I had one year that was a thousand percent increase in sales, a 1000% increase in the service department. Wow. And the following year was 800% increase in the service department. So, so my passion is helping the service repair industry. Wow, so you do fix operations too? Yes, absolutely. Now, tell and where are I can you based you out of? So uh, I'm in South Florida near Miami. Okay. And we, like I said, we, we're nationwide. So I go on site. So you're uh, on I'm site. On so I didn't know if you Skype with them to do the training or you're actually physically there in person. I'm physically there in person. Uh, we make it happen. And the thing is, I always, here's my rule of thumb I, I want to not only over promise, 
and over deliver. Like I know we've heard the term before, under promise, over deliver, but why not push ourselves to find our true potential and let's over promise and over deliver. Let's do both. Let's separate ourselves from, from what others consider to be our competitors. See, we should all, I feel like we should always be focused on what our true potential is. What are we truly capable of when we dig deep down inside of who we are and what we're made of? Let's find our true potential and focus on separating ourselves from second place. Let's focus on, on increasing the gap between second place. Well, can right? you give us any insight, any tricks in how you do this? I mean, for example, in the auto repair industry, you are faced yep. with many choices out there. There's many of those repair shops, let's say, for example, where we are. So what will set that one auto shop, uh, repair shop ahead of the other? What's a certain technique that you come in and what Perfect. you can bring to that, that particular uh, automotive shop? Okay. Um, so the first thing we want to do is you the golden rule in selling. I'll just go ahead and give you a few gold nuggets that you can actually benefit from today. Uh, the number one rule in selling is always agree. And that... That word always is pretty powerful because even when it's uncomfortable, we still need to be agreeable. The moment, the, the one moment that we step out of agreement from that prospect, from that prospective client, is the moment that the deal is actually off. So we always have to live by that rule is always be agreeable. And what I mean by that is not necessarily always let the customer beat you up. Um, what I really mean is express to the customer that you see it their way. Right? Because I promise you the best way to diffuse a scenario is to simply agree with them. You can't argue with somebody that agrees with you on everything. True. Very uh, good point. Now, here's a really good one for you. I put this together just for you guys. Um, in order for a prospect to make a decision to do business with you, they need three things from you. They need three things. The first thing they need is faith in you as the individual. A lot of times we think, hey, I'm just the salesperson or I'm just the service manager, right? But they need faith in you. So we have to step our game up as the professional. We are the authority in what we're doing. We are the expert. And the customer needs to be able to have faith in us. So the first thing they have to do is have faith in us. The second thing they have to have faith in is in the company. It's the company's ability to deliver on what you say they can deliver on. And then finally, the third thing is faith in your processes, faith in your system, the, the system of how you do it. And the, it's real easy, guys. The way you can actually help them have faith in all three is to just show them. Show them. Here's, here's what I can do for you. Here's what you're going to experience in our company. And here's how we're going to do it. Go ahead and predict the future. Predict their wonderful experience while they're in, while you're face to face or on the phone with them, go ahead and predict how easy their experience, how pleasurable that experience is going to be with you. Del, like one of the things that I first went and saw you live was you said salespeople are not born, they're made. A while ago, and that's when I started following you because I happen to agree with that. And that's what you promote and that's what the first live that i saw could you tell us a little bit about that training process that you have absolutely the look the way that i design my my material and here's another service that i offer this is the, actually the one that i have i know it might look a little have a little bit of a uh, of a shadow there but no, that's a master closer <laughs> live it's a one year training program where I actually come to your, your location one day a month and we train all day for that one day. Uh, the Master Closer Live is where I come in and I teach every salesperson regardless of what level they're at. The criteria is designed to, um, to help even the beginner level all the way through the people that have been doing this for, for generations. Um, and I, I guarantee you I get results. So um, it is designed to help uh, everyone in that industry, regardless of what level they're at. But yeah, Richie, you're exactly right. Salespeople or master closers are created. You're not born a closer. The only people that say that are the people that don't know how to close and they don't want to take the responsibility to, to create that for themselves. 
So they just simply brush it off by saying, hey, I wasn't born that way, I can't help it. So I truly believe that, that it is a learnable skill for sure. Well, there's a thing that they say, I was born with the gift of gab, they say, right? And to be a salesperson or a closer, you gotta be born with the gift of listening because I believe it's more listening than talking. Would you agree with that statement? Absolutely, absolutely. The gift of gab is not really a gift, right? Right. <laughs> no, it can go the other way extremely. <laughs> I mean, that's when I you talk you, yourself out of deals. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you want to say one of the qualities of a master closer, one of the characteristics is actually the ability to express what you need to express in as few words as possible. Um, not only are you going to avoid talking them out of the deal, but you're also going to collapse time frames, which is another characteristic of a master closer, is the ability to produce while collapsing time frames. So we need to do more, and we need to do more faster. I have a good friend of mine, and one of my partners, he's got a ATM uh, that he does business-wise, and this guy's really amazing because he doesn't speak two words, but he can close anybody. Uh, and he really closes deals in this. He sells routes, you know, when he's got a tremendous skill of listening, doesn't speak too much, and I have meetings with him all the time. He don't speak at all. I mean, for me to get two words out of him, it's hard. So we laugh. I laugh and I look at him and I just laugh at him, right? Uh, I'm going to mention his name. His name's Dominic. He's, he's made a big impact on my life. Uh, and Dominic's is a very interesting character. He doesn't speak that much, but man, that guy can close. He listens and listens and listens. And just the other day, he went and closed a lot of deals. He's amazing with this business he started, and I wish him really, really amazing luck because he really deserved it. He's really an amazing guy. You know, it's really amazing how listening, and I've learned that from him a lot, how listening this guy closes 90% of the prospects. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up, Richie. Uh, one of the magical questions that I always teach my service departments, uh, and I'll go ahead and give you that today too, just over delivering, right? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you another gold nugget. The, the magical questions that you want to ask as a service advisor, the, the magical questions is very simple. You simply want to say, hey, that's a really nice vehicle. Has it been a great vehicle for you? And then let them answer, because they're going to tell you exactly what you need to hear. They're either going to say, no, I hate that vehicle. I'm about to get rid of it. Or they're going to say, yes, I love that vehicle. I'm going to drive it forever. Well, guys, if we're in the repair business, which one of those answers is going to better arm us for developing the, um, the recommendations for their service. And not only that, but you want to get a feel for it. Like you can tell by, by asking the right questions, um, are they somebody that that's the kind of person that does want to take care of their vehicle, the service and the maintenance when it's due. Um, if we ask the right questions on the front end, we can properly stage how we're going to pr present um, the repair, so the work order. That's really interesting because the fixed operations is really, really important. What drives the industry really drives it? The parts department. You know mm -hmm. why? Because parts is what sells constantly, Absolutely. right? And the fixed operation is key, key in the automotive industry. Cars sell, right? What really sells is service because Absolutely. it's residual and residual. And what really sells is parts. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, parts is amazing. And that's what the OEMs are promoting because parts are constantly just wear and tear all the time, you know? Right. And that's what drives our industry, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, selling cars drives our industry because without the cars out on the road, we can't fix them. But really, that, that department, the fix operations, it's amazing. And a lot of people don't understand that. Yep, you're exactly right. Um, one of the things that I uh, also do is... I, Whenever I present an invoice uh, or a repair order to a prospect, I always recommend you do it this way. You go ahead and prepare. This is just another gold nugget, guys. I can't help it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we appreciate it. <laughs> the, the, another thing that you want to do in the service department is you want to always prepare three 
potential work orders. You want to prepare three different estimates, if you will. And what you want to do is the first one that you prepare needs to be the fully loaded recommendation. No, don't hold anything back. Make one that's fully loaded. Now, always be ethical. Don't get, I'm not, I'm not saying do anything unethical by any means, but anything that need that vehicle might need, anything that that vehicle is due for based on mileage or manufacturer recommendations, fully load up that estimate. And then you want to reverse engineer. So you want to build the fully loaded one and then reverse engineer uh, to make it a smaller estimate and then even back out more stuff to make a really small, like bare bones minimum. So that way, when you're presenting to the client, they have three choices to choose from. Who doesn't like three choices in that scenario? You have good, better, best. And it works like a charm in this business, in the auto repair industry. It, it works perfectly. And I, I, I don't, it's very rare that I actually see uh, the service department um, consistently uh, presenting three proposals to the, uh, the owner of the vehicle. Yeah, I just had that recently when I got my car repaired. <clears throat> they actually gave me upfront proposal from the service department saying, hey, look, your tire, the front left is a four, the thickness, but now the back one's a seven, front one's an eight. And so, you know, we do recommend, but you don't have to. And by the way, your battery life, well, it's about 65%. So they put everything up front. And then I made my decision saying, okay, I'll, right. I'll replace that tire. But I felt very informed. I felt knowledgeable. Yep. And I know next time I could do the battery, but this time I'll, I'll do the tire. Right, and you're not, you're certainly not wasting your time when you're no. the one writing the estimate. When you're the one writing the estimate, all you do is save it in the notes, right? You save yeah. it in the customer history. Mm -hmm. So when they do come back, you, you already know what you had written up and recommended last time that they haven't done yet. So you're really saving yourself more work. You're saving yourself work in the future as well for that particular customer. Yeah. One of the biggest thing, Dale, in our business is out in my marketplace, there's a lot of leases, right? So the penetration on leases out here, as a matter of fact, there's one store that has out in my marketplace a 91% of lease. So what happens wow. is with the maintenance package and all this, their hours per RO is pretty, pretty light. Now, let me mm -hmm. ask you a question about upselling. Do you have a training program that you can help a dealership increase their hours per RO? Absolutely. You know, I'm so glad you asked that question. Um, I did develop, there is one of the courses in the Master Closer Live that I teach. Um, each time that I, that I do a workshop um, on site, we cover 10 different courses. Every time I, I go there, it's 10 new sales courses for that industry. And one of the courses that we teach is how to upsell, um, not only how to double your average invoice RO, but how to triple it. Um, I'm ex extremely good and proficient at uh, presenting the upsell the right way. And again, we have to stay ethical. We want to use everything to our advantage because the truth of the matter is we're all here to make money. It's not a business if we're not making money. Um, but we do need to stay ethical. And I teach how to ethically double or triple your RO averages. Um, so it's not a problem. It's definitely something that we cover in one of the courses. Great. Good. Yeah, I'm part of a Master Closing Society. Obviously, it's very important to network and keep in touch with people. I just want to mention quickly about Richie Bellows' uh, cigar event that's coming up May 9th, which would help dealers, obviously, meet other dealers. And if Correct. you don't mind just elaborating on that. Yeah, we have three speakers. We have Stan Shear, mm -hmm. El Patron, mm -hmm. and Ralph Peglia. Okay. I invited Dale. I don't know if he could come. Well, he's down in Florida enjoying the good weather. Right. Why would he so come? So I don't know Florida? if he can come in May, but I did invite him. <laughs> I invited Ken Walls. So I look forward maybe they'll come out or Ken Walls. Let's see what happens. Ralph's from Vegas, and he's coming down. All right. So we'll take it from there. Fantastic. And you can get more information on RichieBello.com. And there's a link there. Perfect. Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for right now for this installment of Auto Dealer News. We want to thank you, Dale, so much for joining us uh, via Skype thank today. You. We really appreciate your insight and all those golden nuggets we're going to take in our back pocket. And yeah. We're going to enjoy those, right? So thank you, Dale. And, of course, thank you, Richie. And we'll see you soon right here again on Richie Bello TV. Thank you, Dale. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good.